you know, my experience with Beaton that has helped me a great deal, Cecil Beaton. Because with Cecil Beaton, I remember when I was in the Air Force, I wrote a letter to him and said, I like your work so much that when I come out of this Air Force into the Civil Street, I wonder whether I could come and meet you and discuss photography. And he kindly invited me to tea. And I remember going to his house and being met by a butler at the door, <laughs> invited him to tea. And Cecil Beaton came in and um, he said, what can I do for you? I said, I'd love to see some of your work. And he showed me some lovely tenets of Marlon Dietrich. And uh, he said, that, um, in what way can I help you? I said, well, I was thinking of taking this up as a profession. He said, no, I wouldn't, my boy. It's overcrowded. Don't do it. And about 10 years later, he was photographing Sabu at Denham. And they asked me to assist him. And uh, during the session, I said to him, remember me? He said, no. I said, you told me not to take up photography. He said, I knew you would, you silly boy. <laughs> so that was that. You could not uh, photograph on a small camera because when, when a portrait was taken, it was retouched. The bigger negative it was better for retouching. In fact, we were the plastic surgeons of the day. And um, th these negatives could be contacted, printed, a thousand copies within a few days to go all over the world. And you could only do that by doing contact prints from the 10 by 8. Any smaller camera wasn't accepted. And the definition was perfect. It was quite a job to set the lens and go back to the camera back to put the plate in to pull the sheaf out. I think it was, a, I had an assistant, but it was really, very difficult to get that special focus. I always concentrate on the eyes of the sitter. That was the important thing to me. And if I could get those sharp, I let the rest take its own place. When I photographed Marlon and Dietrich, I actually did five pictures and I would do about four negatives on each shot. And if I was lucky, I would get one out of four because of the fine focus. Um, so really, I was using sometimes on a session 25 10 by 8 negatives to get five pictures. That's quite a good ratio. Well, it was very difficult because you had to get that very fine focus on the eyes and lips and let the rest go. But, um, you know, between the time you focused, and if they were smoking a cigarette, they could easily move backwards or forwards out of focus. In fact, I got in the end a measuring rod, which I kept. I just pulled it out to the sitter's shoulder and said, Stay, keep there. And they were very patient because they loved sitting in front of the camera. It was like looking at themselves in a mirror because it was a very large lens, and they could see reflections of themselves. So it was an ego trip. Rank had this wonderful um, system, I think, of the time, which was similar to Hollywood, is that they had various departments all under contract. And this goes for writers, cameramen, directors, producers. Um, so it was a very uh, well-established um, uh, uh, st studio system they had. Um, and you had the opportunity to work with some of the most wonderful people. You see, I was actually photographing Gregory Peck when he said to me, you know, Cornell, Hollywood is changing rapidly. And I said, in what way, Greg? And he said, well, artists are not longer under contract to, to, to studios. They're now going out on their own limb. And um, so be prepared for it over here. Dinah Dawes was a past master at creating her own publicity. And uh, uh, she, she said to me, uh, Cornell, I, I believe you're going to Venice Film Festival. I'll be there and I've got a special photograph I want you to take. I said, right, let me know when you want it taken. And when I was there, she said, I want you to be, I'd like you to be in a, a boat 
when I come out in this gondola and um, take the necessary pictures. Well, when I, I wonder what she was up to. I wonder whether she'd taken all her clothes off. But in fact, out came the gondola and she took her coat off, a wrap, and there she was in a mink bikini. It was the hottest day I've ever remembered. But it wasn't mink, it was rabbit. <laughs> but there, there was, and it got international coverage throughout the world, in every paper. In 1959, I had taken a holiday in the south of France uh, and uh, at the villa um, I went to a luncheon and there was um, David Niven, Jack Hawkins, um, uh, Michael Parr, Antonio the Spanish dancer. There was a various number around the table having lunch and we all had a few drinks and I said, well, I'm enjoying myself so much I'm going to send a telegram to Rank and ask them for next week's holiday. And the next day I got a reply, we cannot uh, allow another week's holiday, you've got to get back to the studio because we've got so many people to be photographed. So I, I said to the table, there was about 12 people around the luncheon table, I said to David Niven, I think we should take a, no, he said, I, Cornell, I think we should take a vote on whether you should re resign from the Rank organization. So they took a vote, and it, the vote was overwhelming. I must have left Pinewood by sheer... Uh, that, that meeting with all those artists in South France and said resign. I think from then on, the film industry seemed to have changed. Artists were no longer being put under contract. The studio system was not being carried out as it used to be. And the entire... Um, system of, of photography changed and even now it, a photographer is not always employed on films. That's changed. But, in, but I could see the system going and I think I moved out at the right time.